ladies and gentlemen. You may want to sleep with the lights on after this one. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 scariest nightmares in movies. <laughs> for this list, we'll be focusing on the nightmarish visions film characters have experienced in their sleep over the years. We will not be including daydreams, fever dreams, or hallucinations such as the dead baby scene from Train Spotting, however. <laughs> because those are lists for another day. By the way, a spoiler alert might just be in order. <laughs> Number 10, The Woman Appears, The Woman in Black. Who are you? Most horror audiences might know The Woman in Black thanks to Daniel Radcliffe's 2012 film, but this 1989 British TV version, produced for the ITV network, petrified a whole generation of late 80s viewers. Following the same story originally found in Susan Hill's novel, young solicitor Arthur Kidd is tormented by a spirit who haunts the grounds of a widow's estate he's taking care of. Following her recent death, Arthur goes to bed still trying to make sense of a toy soldier he finds. Mysteriously, he's woken up by childlike ghostly whispers, quickly followed by the shocking floating body of the woman in black. The lady's nails on a chalkboard scream makes this nightmare that much more terrifying. <laughs> Number 9. Zelda Pet Cemetery. Stephen King knows how to invoke everyone's deepest, darkest secrets or regrets, turning them into monsters that keep us up at night. This film brings these fears effectively to life as we follow the terrifying ordeal of the Creed family and the local pet cemetery that can bring dead things back to life. Kinda. Daddy. What if Church dies? What if he dies and has to go to the pet cemetery? While Patriarch Lewis is dealing with the consequences of reviving the dead, wife and mother Rachel has her own nightmares haunting her. Living with the trauma of watching her older sister slowly wither away from spinal meningitis, Rachel's nightmares of the sickly Zelda are a gruesome reminder that the greatest terror does not need to stem from an unknown monster. I'm coming for you, Rachel. Number 8. Karis's Dream, The Exorcist. Where'd you get the money for the Shutter's Regal, the poor box? <laughs> That's an insult. I got a vow pouch. Another famous character whose regrets manifest as nightmarish dreams. Father Karis has to deal with his inner demons before beginning his epic battle with the all too real demon Pazuzu, which now seems to inhabit the body of a young Reagan McNeil. Ah! Oh, Reagan! Keep away! This hour is mine. Guilt ridden over his belief that he didn't do enough to help his elderly mother, who was sent to a nursing home against his better judgment, Karis is completely distraught to hear about her death. I should have been there. I wasn't there. I should have been there. There was nothing you could do. He bitterly and drunkenly falls asleep, only to be tormented by visions of her calling for help. Short but sweet, this dream's bizarre editing, jarring pacing, and subliminal demon flashes make us want to hide under the bed. Not Reagan's bed, though. <laughs> Number 7. Beyond the Grave, Carrie. Well, he said that she's young enough so that she'll forget all about it in time. Many nightmares stem from traumatic events whose distressing effect we can't shake. Poor Sue seems to be the only survivor of Carrie White's prom night massacre, where she used her telekinetic powers to get the ultimate revenge. The ethereal and dreamlike atmosphere in the final scene, as Sue brings flowers to Carrie's final resting place, should be a sign to audiences that something's up. Notice the red car going backwards, but surely the carnage is now over. <laughs> nope. We're jolted back to reality just as Sue is jolted out of her sleep in one of the most shocking horror endings. Seeing Carrie's arm rise out of her grave is sure to give Sue, and us, years of recurring nightmares. It's all right. I'm here. It's all right. Number 6. Birthing. The Fly. Give us a push. You can push it out. Come on. Watching your brilliant scientist boyfriend experiment on himself and slowly transform into a monstrous fly creature is a fantastic example of a living nightmare. It's also a fantastic example of a David Cronenberg movie. It's gonna be easy. Don't worry, honey. 
Veronica comes to the terrifying realization that she's pregnant and that her mutated baby daddy is only getting worse. Honestly, it's too terrifying to imagine what kind of horror that would elicit. It will we'll be over soon. Here we go. This movie pulls no punches, though, and gives us a visceral depiction of Veronica's literal worst nightmare, giving birth to a fly. <laughs> And you can tell that Cronenberg is the master and orchestrator of Wild Nightmares Come to Life, because that's him pulling the creature out of Veronica. <laughs> Number 5. Twins, Dead Ringers Don't let me dream that again. Separation can be a terrifying thing. Yep, this movie's tagline couldn't be more accurate. This is a movie about creepy twin gynecologists, once again directed by David Cronenberg. So we'll try to answer the question we know you're dying to ask. Yes, Dead Ringers goes there and beyond. Right. I'll just separate you. The twins certainly have a weird symbiotic dependent relationship and are not above secretly sharing women. When Beverly falls for their client Claire, the result goes beyond a bizarre incestuous love triangle. In an extremely painful, disturbing, and way too symbolic dream, Beverly finds himself in bed with Claire and his brother, but is in fact literally attached at the hip to Elliot. Let's just say he and Claire's teeth make clear what needs to happen to this relationship. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was dreaming. Number four, chest burster, Aliens. I think you're damn lucky to be alive, kiddo. In 1986, James Cameron had insanely huge shoes to fill while making the sequel to one of the most successful, beloved, and terrifying science fiction films ever made. <sighs> Although he took a more action-heavy approach, Aliens was not lacking in thrills and became a huge success itself. One of its most surprising scenes not only pays tribute to the original's most famous sequence, but also taps into the audience's fear of the evil that lurks inside. God! Heroine Ripley wakes up in a hospital bed, only to find an unfriendly and unwelcome visitor trying to exit her body. The audience shares Ripley's relief that this was just a dream, since we cannot fathom this badass icon succumbing to this terrible fate. Bad dreams again? You want something to help you sleep? No. Number three, lots of bugs. Drag me to hell. What's the matter? <sighs> I, could, I couldn't wake up. It's sometimes hard to know you're in a nightmare, or in a scary scene for that matter. Like when everything seems peaceful and you're lying in bed with your loved one. In this scene, however, the creepy music and a pestering fly let us know that things are not okay, as we witness Christine swallowing the bug in her sleep. Just when we think that this will wake her up, director Sam Raimi decides to up the cringe factor. <laughs> and we watch in agony as the evil gypsy woman attacks Christine, only to baptize her with a swarm of bugs that fall right into her open mouth. <laughs> if you've got a fear of insects, you may want to fast forward through this one. It's just a dream. Number two, The Nun, The Conjuring 2. <laughs> Who's that? Ed and Lorraine Warren are two of the most famous real-life ghost hunters and demonologists in the world. In the sequel to The Conjuring, we find them tackling even more terrifying demonic forces. Lorraine, played once again by Vera Farmiga, was always known to have visions of things to come. And seeing her husband being killed in one of these visions during a seance understandably puts her on edge, especially since the death is always accompanied by a monstrous demonic nun. In one such dream, as she sleeps on her couch, she, and all of us, receive quite a pants-soiling scare as the gruesome nun jumps out of a painting and makes her plans very clear. She wants Ed Warren. What do you want? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, Classroom Nightmare, A Nightmare on Elm Street. What is seen is not always what is real. Topping our list is none other than the granddaddy of them all, the king of nightmares, Freddy Krueger. Who are you? Placing him at number one was a no-brainer. 
The hard part was narrowing down Freddy's ultimate nightmare from two decades worth of terrifying sequences. Freddy is the personification of the nightmare, and the Dream Master knows exactly what to conjure up to make you sweat. The best example has to be Nancy's torturous dream when she falls asleep in English class. <laughs> Freddy uses her recently deceased friend's corpse to lure her outside and deeper into her dream, chasing her into his industrial lair. It's nevertheless an iconic turning point in Nancy's struggle, as she realizes it's only a dream that she can eventually control. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? That's just natural side effects of such an unusually long hypersleep. What other movie nightmares gave you nightmares of your own? I'll catch you. For more shocking top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Holy shit.